distinct honor and pleasure to be here in Bartica, the gateway to the interior this morning, to participate in this national tree planting exercise. You will recall His Excellency had pledged that Bartica would become the first green town in Guyana. The launching of this initiative here this morning is one of many tasks that need to be accomplished for our green status to be achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, the government of Guyana has decided as a general policy to promote the development of a green economy. From an agricultural standpoint, investing in a green economy has the potential to enhance food security, reduce poverty, improve nutrition and health, and create rural jobs by reducing pressure on the environment, including greenhouse gas emissions. Farming practices and technologies that are instrumental in greening agriculture include in enhancing soil fertility and restoring it, crop rotations, improving water use efficiency, reducing chemical pesticide and herbicide use, and reducing food spoilage and loss by expanding the use of post-harvest storage and processing facilities. In many countries today, winning the battle against environmental degradation and economic decline depends on planting trees. Unfortunately, although much of the developing world has recognized the need for reforestation, successful efforts to reverse the loss of forests are rare indeed. Every tree planted is another step forward in the battle to save the planet not only because of its environmental contributions, but because individual actions help to build the momentum needed. Trees play a critical role in our existence on Earth. They provide us with numerous products that we utilize in our daily lives, from food to furniture, paper to cosmetics, and a host of products. Their aesthetic appeal is universal and they make our world a much more beautiful place. I am particularly pleased that this initiative will focus on the role of trees in mitigating the negative effects of climate change. This is an example of a climate smart practice that the Ministry of Agriculture is promoting to help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. As you are aware, climate smart agriculture is a business model that increases agricultural output while maintaining or even reducing the amount of inputs, such as land, water, or fertilizer. It also increases total productivity while reducing environmental impacts and building resilience to threats to production induced by the effects of climate change. As most of you would be aware, we are in Agriculture Month 2015. The tree planting exercise is one of the many initiatives we will be undertaking in October. Other activities include an agriculture fair, launching of a booklet on green agriculture, open days at various agencies, and an exhibition featuring local foods. The Ministry of Agriculture is committed to enhancing food and nutrition security throughout Guyana. The tree planting exercise, which is being done countrywide, is one component of our food and nutrition security strategy. The emphasis is on fruit trees. The benefits to be garnered are tremendous. I cannot overemphasize the value of fresh fruits and juices. There is also the value added component where excess fruits can be made into jams, jellies, and other commodities. The Ministry of Agriculture is the main agency responsible for executing this project especially the extension officers in the different regions, research scientists, crop reporters, agricultural field assistants, etc. Other ministries, such as the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Communities, and the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs are also important partners in these exercises. I would like to assure you that this is not a one-off exercise. It will be a continuous one. The benefits to be crude are tremendous and can eventually lead to village industry economies, an area that our government is committed to developing 
to enhance the livelihoods of our people. I thank you. Don't forget Amarillians in this country. It's always good to be back here where it all started. As I told you when I was campaigning, I dream about this place. I dream about Bartica. When I got married 45 years ago, I brought my wife here on what used to be called the Golden Beach. My first child took her first gulp of water. I won't bring her back now to take a gulp of water at the Golden Beach. But after you all finish this campaign, I'll bring her back because you're all going to clean up the river and clean up the beach. But it's always good to be back here in Bartica. So you know why I came. You know why all the cabinet ministers are here. You know why we gather today. Because once again, Bartica is going to take the lead. Bartica is going to take the lead in making Guyana a green country again. Not only the gateway to the hinterland, but the gateway to a new technology. Madam Chairperson, Minister of Agriculture, Vice President, Ministers, Regional Chairman Gordon Bradford, Ario, Regional Democratic Councillors, Presidential Advisors on the Environment, School children, I was so happy that school children greeted me along the way. I asked them what they were doing at school on Saturday morning. They said they come to plant trees. Oh, that makes me so happy. Non-governmental organizations, I saw a lion. Yeah, three lions. No tigers, no jaguars, but three lions. More? All right. Members of civil society, fellow residents of Bartica. Let me start by congratulating the Honorable Noel Holder and the officials of the Ministry of Agriculture for making this event possible. Congratulations, Ministry of Agriculture. Congratulations, Noel. <laughs> Let me also congratulate the Regional Democratic Council for the Kuyuni Mazaruni region for bringing out thousands of supporters. I'm sure. There must be thousands somewhere, not, in the, not here today. But I know Gordon did his best to mobilize um, the residents of this city, this town. I call you a town because next year, April, you will be a town. That's a promise. I promise to come back and I come back. I promise you're going to be a town, you'll be a town. But let me tell you one thing. When we talk about three day, national three day, this makes Good economic sense. Bartica has over 15,000 residents. Let's call it 3,000 households. I know some men got two households. <laughs> household A and household B. But let us call it, let us say we have 3,000 households. And about five people living in each household, right? Now the Minister of Agriculture told me, that if you have one breadfruit tree, a mature breadfruit tree, that breadfruit tree will bear 350 pounds of breadfruit in one year. You know what that means? It means Bartik could become the breadfruit capital of the whole Caribbean. A million pounds of breadfruit every year from Bartik alone. That is possible with this National Tree Day. When your baby born is get a baby breadfruit pop. <laughs> when you go liming by the by the, uh, the street corner there, you must have breadfruit chips. 
And look at her size. She eat bread fruit, tree when she, bread fruit when she's small. <laughs> and she grew up to be fit and healthy. Thank you, Minister Simona Bruce. But fellow residents of Bartica, we are participating in a transformative event. Not only to transform Bartica, but to transform your lives, to transform the Kuyuni Mazaruni region, and to transform this country. Bartica is going to lead the way. We sing in our national anthem, Green Land of Guyana. And that is my mission, to make Guyana a green land again. And this is going to be a national annual event that the first Saturday of Agriculture Month every year, we're going to have a national tree day. And future chairmen of Kuyuni Mazaruni region will get the opportunity to bring thousands and thousands of Bartians here to share our plants and make this the greenest tongue, the cleanest tongue in the whole country. We want to see a tree in every yard. No old car, no junk, a tree in every yard. We want to see trees in your farms. We want to see trees along the streets, lining the streets. We want to see trees in all the communities in this great region, Kayuni Mazaruni region. We want to see trees everywhere. We want to see Kuyuni Mazaruni region making a contribution to making the whole country green. The entire country will look to Bartica for this green revolution, this green initiative. National Tree Day, therefore, is not an ornamental event. It is an economic event, it is an environmental event but is an integral part of our government's policy to create a green economy. This green economy must involve every one of you. That is what made me so happy to see the school children here this morning. It must involve every citizen, every household, every community. We want Bartica to be a model town but it must also be a model tongue for the environment. It must also be a model tongue for energy. It is also be a model tongue for ecology. And we want to work with non-governmental organizations, with the Regional Democratic Council, with youth, private citizens, with the miners, to make sure that this revolution doesn't falter, that we continue to show the Caribbean to show the continent what we mean by having a green economy. Today, you lead the way for a green tomorrow. This is part of our overall plan towards the long-term development of this country. A green economy, as you've already heard, is aimed at your long-term well-being. It will reduce social inequalities. It will promote sustainable environmental practices. And this morning, I want to lay out five steps, five rules, five stages of this green economy. First of all, right here, we must learn to promote the sustainable exploitation of our natural resources. Sometimes when you fly over some areas of this region, seven, you believe the country got abscess, sores, bile, cancer, eczema. Some of the areas that are mined out look bad. It means that we are not practicing sustainable exploitation of our natural resources. We must have, alongside mining, a program for reforestation, a program for solid waste management, and the disposal of all these toxic chemicals. Bartica suffered 20 years ago 
when there's a terrible accident upriver. And you have to be the watchdogs of your environment to make sure that there are no more environmental accidents brought about because of poor practices, the exploitation of natural resources. Hardly a week passed, you don't hear about some cave-in. You don't hear about some turbidity. Turbidity is a long word meaning nasty water. The water is dirty. It looks like chocolate when you're flying over. And we must ensure that our miners use sustainable practices, environmentally sound practices, to ensure that even though we have to break the egg to get the omelette, we don't have to mess up the whole environment in doing so. We all know that gold is subject to market fluctuation. And right now, a lot of miners are finding it hard. But when the prices are high, you must insist that they employ sound environmental practices. When they mine out an area, it could be replanted. Not only in good times, but also in bad times. Let us make sure that this country is left in a condition that we'd like to hand it over to our children because we can't take this where we're going. We are only the trustees. We are only the custodians of the environment. Just as we got it from our four parents, we must pass it on to our grandchildren. And that is why we have announced that there will be a sovereign wealth fund. So even if you make a dollar, well, nowadays, dollar ain't got no value. Even if you make a thousand dollars, you will put aside something in something called a sovereign wealth fund so that your children must never be poor again. Whatever we earn from gold or diamonds or timber, we must put aside some bit in the sovereign wealth fund. Oil is coming. Maduro smell the oil. But it's you oil, you and your picnic them. So we have to keep, don't worry with the kuras. We can get more kuras, but we can't get more oil. So we have to protect our natural resources. The second rule that you must follow in Bartica is that you have to ensure that this green economy, you have to protect the environment to make sure that the miners who are working in the pits, in the mines, in the rivers, are kept safe from sudden death. We must ensure that they don't dump waste into the rivers. Many of our indigenous people depend on rivers for drinking water, for bathing, for washing their clothes, for swimming. And we must make sure that that water remains as far as humanly possible. We keep that water clean. We keep our communities clean. I asked Mr. Garden Bradford, as soon as he said the regatta, I said, make sure you have bins, make sure you have black plastic bags. I don't want to see any styrofoam when I landed Bartica Stellan. Thank you for clapping. Thank you for your applause. When I landed Bartica Stellan, I mustn't see plastic and styrofoam. When I go to Golden Beach, I mustn't see plastic. As many coming down from the airport. I don't want to see plastics. We have to have a good solid waste program. And this is rule number two, that you have to ensure that solid waste is carefully disposed of. And I hope that in weeks to come, we will be able to introduce recycling practices so that all of your plastics could be recycled and used for some other purpose. All your paper could be recycled and used for all some other purposes. And let me tell the shopkeepers, the time will come very soon when you wouldn't be able to see styrofoam. You got to smuggle styrofoam in your girdle to bring it in Guyana. You know people smuggle things in the girdle? 
Well, that's the only way styrofoam can come into this country. When you, when you go to buy food, it will be in cardboard because the cardboard will be dissolved, it could be destroyed. But styrofoam stay forever. So that is rule number two. Rule number three is to promote sustainable energy. You see this thing that burning your other got your outside heart is free, but it's energy. The sun is energy. This watch I have here, all that you have to do is put it in the sun here and it starts to work. It's a solar watch. I don't have to wind it up. I don't have to put in battery. It's a solar watch. As long as I have sunlight, this watch will work. And this was my promise to you. When I came back here after the elections, this is the first place I came to say thank you after the elections. You all gave me bad name. People ask me why I was going to Bartica. I said, what do you think? <laughs> I love Bartica. But let me tell you this. Your school, your hospital, your restaurant, your police station, your, your um, short time place, everywhere must get solar energy, solar light. Be using too much gasoline, too much diesel. -y. Much of the energy we're using could be generated by sustainable means. By sun, by water, by biogas, by wind. So let us promote the sustainable energy initiative. Solar panels are not little toys or trinkets you give people at Christmas time. I want to see a whole solar farm at Bartica generating light for all these 3,000 households. Huge farms, huge wind farms, not one, one solar panel, a huge farm. So when I come back to the schools, I will see a huge farm pushing the light pushing the computers and making sure that we do not have to bring fossil fuels like gasoline and diesel and kerosene back into this community. This is old technology, Bartika. It is not new. Years ago, as a young officer, you go on patrol, the battery run down, all you do is open a solar panel, recharge the battery, and you just keep on keeping on because the sun can generate a form of energy which you can use without using fuel. All along our coast, well, all you not got coast here, all you got river, but you still got a little breeze. The wind can generate electricity, the sun can generate electricity. So let us think outside the box. Don't just think about barrels of fuel, barrels of oil. Maybe the Venezuelans are happy but you will be happy when you get sustainable energy from sun, wind, and water, which you have in abundance. Rule number four is that you must promote sound ecological services. These rainforests that you have, as the Vice President and other speakers have said, are the lungs of the earth. You may not believe it, but we can't live without trees. The indigenous people have a saying that the trees hold up the earth, the sky. If you cut down the trees, the sky will fall on you. Well, I never see sky fall yet, but what I can tell you this, unless you allow trees to grow, you will not be able to do what Dr. Paris was telling you. You will not be able to use the fresh air. This place is going to become hotter and hotter and it's hot enough already. But trees will cool down the place. That is why I want to see every avenue. And I tell you all already, I don't know why this place was never, this place should be a town 100 years ago. Because when you go to other places, I can't call out the names, I'm president now, so I can't call out the names of the other places. But when you go to other places, they don't have avenues and streets like you. But I want to see tree-lined avenues. 
I want to see fountains, I want to see parks, I want to see gardens, I want to see zoo. All that in Barkical. People must come here because it's the most environmentally sung community in the entire country. So I want you to promote sung ecological practices by encouraging the growth and replanting of forests. So it is up to you. As you know, in the neighboring region, the Potaro Separuni region, many years ago, in 1989, that's how long, 26 years ago, President Desmond Hoyt went to the Commonwealth heads of government and he promised them what I would call an ecological laboratory, a place called Ivor Cramer Rainforest. 371,000 hectares, a huge area in the heart of Guyana, a generous gift, not to Region 8, not to Guyana, but to all humanity. And that Ivo Krama is to make sure that we learn some environmental and ecological practices. And right here in Bartica, the gateway to the hinterland, I would like to see those practices implemented, that we must make sure that our children grow up learning the importance of keeping Guyana green, the importance of our forests, even though we have to cut down trees to make our houses, we must replant those trees so that the next generation will have trees to keep the country cool. And the fifth, the fifth rule that I would like to leave with you is about green technologies. When I speak about green technologies, I speak about energy saving bulbs. When I speak about green technologies, I speak about offices which use more computers than paper. I speak about smart homes which re allow the breeze to come in, so you don't have to use air conditioning or other electrical devices to keep you cool. We have to learn to build in a different way, so we make use of the wind and the natural cooling of the vegetation that is around us. We encourage the use of plants, not generating plants, but growing plants that we are celebrating today so that Bartica becomes cooler. A real cool tongue, man. You ever hear about a cool tongue? Bartica must become a cool tongue. We must look at the machines we use. Sometimes you just want to run from here to the hotel when your wife thinks you're going to work. You're going to check out the local wildlife. But you don't. You don't have to drive a car and pretend you're going far. You could use an electrical vehicle, a bicycle, something that doesn't use up gasoline. And furthermore, it's more silent. When you come back home, you just park quiet, quiet, as if you've been downstairs all the time. So National Tree Day is a day for all of us for our children, for our women, our men folk, for our minors, for our business persons. National Tree Day is an opportunity for Bartica and this great Kuyuni Mazaroni region, a region bigger than the Netherlands, to lead the way, to lead the way to making Guyana a country with a green economy. Last week, I, I was at the United Nations General Assembly, and people are interested in this green economy. I spoke to the Prime Minister of Netherlands, Prime Minister of Sweden. They are prepared to help people who are prepared to help themselves. They don't want to come here and see all ATVs and diesel and junk. They want to come and see a thriving green economy. Today is a day for you to start beautifying your surroundings. Today is a day for you to start thinking of feeding yourselves with fruit 
with breadfruit and other plants. Today is a day you must think of investment in this green economy. Not just for you, because you, the trees will live longer than you, but at least you'll be able to give your children something when you are about to die, other than good advice. You'll be able to give them a fruit-bearing tree, or maybe even a farm of trees. So, Bartika, we've come here today to congratulate you on your role as leaders, but also to thank you for accepting this responsibility. I will come back here again and again to see how you're doing, how well you're leading, how well you're adopting this message. So you have a responsibility, not to yourselves or your children alone, not to the rest of Region 7, but to the entire country. And I charge you with the responsibility for leading the Green Revolution in the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. Thank you. I can think of no better place to launch National Tree Day but the tongue of Bartica. Thank you. May God bless you. Thank you. All right. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah.